they carried out the Lord's requirements according to his command through Moses. In other words, God was totally in charge. Moses was only his servant. Now, you know the rest of the story. Moses gets the Ten Commandments, and he leads the children of Israel. And they're getting ready to go into the Promised Land because God still wanted these children to have all of the blessings that he had given to Adam and Eve in the garden. One of the most important passages in Deuteronomy is found in Deuteronomy 6. Zach, you want to show us this? Now, this is the most important scripture. I think I have to stay over here. This is the most important scripture when it comes to parenting. Now, I need to turn around and read this. Hear, O Israel. Let's see, maybe I can do this. Hear, O Israel. Is it on, Zach? Hear, O Israel. The Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Now, this is what God was trying to get the children of Israel to do in the desert. This was his plan for them. Total allegiance to the Lord. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down, and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. I'm sure all of y'all have seen this before, right? This is nothing new. Basically, what God is trying to get the children of Israel to understand is that they are the spiritual teachers of their children. Now, one of the things that's happened to us in, in our society uh, is that, that many parents understand this. In fact, George Barna, who wrote a very, very fine book called Transforming Children into Spiritual Champions, says that at any given point when he does surveys, at least two-thirds of all the parents that he interviews will say that they're Christians. Yes, this is what we're supposed to do. We are the spiritual teachers of our children. But he said only a small portion of them know how to do it. And so what most parents have done is to say, let the church do it. We've got a Zach Zettler over here and a Josh, and they're the ones that are trained at the seminary, and therefore we can take them to the children's program. Let's take them to Awanas. Let's take them to the church choir, and they will be the spiritual teachers of our children. But that is not what God planned for them. So what we're going to do tonight is, is look at the disciplines that parents need to be thinking consciously about developing in their child so that their child will grow up loving the Lord with all their heart, with all their soul and mind, and living for Him on a daily basis. But before we do that, I want to introduce this term to you all that you may or may not know or understand. And this term is biblical worldview. Now, how many of you all have heard that term before? Some have, okay. Biblical worldview. Those of you, can anybody define it for me? What would, you, what would you say that a biblical worldview is if someone asked you to define it? What does it mean to have a biblical worldview? See the world through biblical terms? That's right. Seeing the world through biblical terms. Let me... give you this handout. One of the things that we have to understand is that our children that we are raising are living in a world that is totally, totally out of sync with the biblical worldview. In the newspaper this week, I picked up several articles. One article was, with, uh, was about Mayberry is a fictional place 
but a very real state of mind. Anybody ever watch the uh, Andy Griffith show, Mayberry, uh, OP, and Aunt B? Well, I grew up on this. Uh, Sunday, October 3rd, was the 50th anniversary of the Mayberry series. And it was a quieter, gentler time of life. A time of life when you could let your child just roam the streets on a bicycle, go by himself fishing, and you never had to worry. I grew up in that time. I probably, I'm the oldest one in this room. But I can honestly remember getting on my bicycle on a Saturday morning after having breakfast, and I would ride five miles down to my grandmother's house. My mother didn't know it. She didn't know where I was. I never came home until late Saturday afternoon in time for dinner. And we always had dinner together. Always had dinner together. It really was a quieter, gentler time. I just did a conference on Saturday, understanding and ministering to 21st century parents. And um, parents today, you all have so much that's vying for the time of your child. And this is why the discussion of biblical worldview is so very important, because you need to be aware of what's going on in the lives of children today and what they're being bombarded with. Uh, even in my seminary class, when I talk about the time in which I lived, I'll have students raise their hand and say, I, I can remember as a child, a seven-year-old, having a bicycle and being able to ride down the street. Would you today let your child get on a bicycle and go down the street and be gone for 30 minutes, an hour, without knowing where they are? No. Now, I, just a few years ago, I can remember standing in front of a seminary class and saying, that if I had a child today, I would not let them out of my sight in their yard. And it was on that day that a little child, and it might have been Haltom City where it happened, it was literally abducted out of their yard by somebody who stopped their car and passed by. One of the things that we're dealing with at the seminary and we teach our students is the fact that there are pedophiles everywhere. One in three girls will be sexually abused by the time they uh, go through high school. One in three. That's the statistics. One in five boys will be sexually abused by the time they're out of high school. And we think it's lower for boys, but boys don't usually tell. Just this week, I got a notice. This is the first time this has ever happened. I got a notice, three by five cards in my purse, that there was a high-risk child abuser in my immediate neighborhood. And this morning on the way to seminary, I drove by the house. It's only two blocks away. High-risk, indecent exposure to a child. And these are people that have been convicted. So this, this is a very difficult time in which we're trying to raise children. Here's another article that I found in the newspaper on Sunday. Druidry, Druidry, now official religion in Great Britain. The Druids, Celtics, Stonehenge. And it has a picture of these people dressed in white robes in a circle. And what the Druids do is worship nature, naturalism. And naturalism is a world view. But now in Great Britain, they have said this is, this is a bona fide religion. And it's bona fide in that if you make contributions to the Druids, then it counts towards your taxes, tax deduction. <clears throat> now, help me. Y'all tell me some of the things that you all are facing or that your children are facing that are decisions that, that deal with a worldview that is not Christian. And then we're going to look at the handout and see what a Christian worldview is supposed to look like, and it's based on the Bible. Okay? Anybody? What are you facing? I think our, our children are faced with and taught in so many environments about tolerance, oh. um, you know, of um, sexual orientation or religious views or racial... Um, you know, bias that, that were very different from you know, even you know my age group growing up uh, in terms of what was acceptable and almost normal. 
you know, what was what was really strange or unusual for me is normal and acceptable and uh, you know to our children mm -hmm. and our children are growing up accepting that as everybody's an individual and they have their right to be that's right an individual. And, and that's basically, uh, you know, one of the world views, uh, existentialism. And um, er, er, anything goes. And, and the only thing that you have to be 